Mwai Kibaki is a Kenyan politician who was the third president of Kenya and served from December 2002 to April 2013. He said, I am calling upon all of you to come out and fight corruption and agree to support the government in fighting corruption as our first priority. So let's all be change agents and fight the corruption monster so as to have a better Nigeria. Hello and thanks for joining us on another episode of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Muhammad. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. On the program today, Interpol commends EFCC's anti-graft efforts promises to partner with the Commission. Nigeria and the First Academy NDA cadets visit EFCC for knowledge sharing. EFCC and University of Ibadan seek ways to curb cybercrime in universities. Alleged 12.2 billion naira fraud, patients Jonathan knows fate May 9th as witness described Shagaya patients as co-conspirators. This and more reports right after this timeout. Please stay tuned. Secretary General of Interpol, Jürgen Stuck, has commended the zeal and concerted efforts of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC in reading Nigeria of all forms of economic crime and stressed partnership between Interpol and the Commission. Stuck, who made the remarks during a visit to the EFCC headquarters in Jabi Abuja, is as part of an official visit to the agency and was received by the acting EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu. Here are details of his visit. According to Stock, the fight against corruption will help in the fight against terrorism as the main source of terrorism financing comes from corruption. He emphasized the need for collaboration between international law enforcement agencies in the fight against corruption, stressing that Interpol was establishing a link with the EFCC in achieving the mandate of the anti-graft agency. Where we establish this memorandum of understanding is another major step in uh, establishing the relation between the law enforcement authorities in Nigeria. Uh, we know we also want to build uh, an important cornerstone for the whole region of West Africa and helping West Africa to share relevant information. And I'm sure this system, WAPIS, if once established, will build an important cornerstone even for global law enforcement. Yes, because we know um, that uh, the Nigerian economy is quite successful. There are Nigerian businessmen all around the world. Uh, but also your, your police service needs to have contacts to uh, uh, all other regions, Interpol regions um, in the world. So this is what, what Interpol is about. It's building a, a strong global uh, network. But it has to start at a national level with a good national um, coordination. And what I see here in Nigeria, I think, is a perfect example for other countries maybe to follow. Stock also commended the EFCC as the champions of the anti-corruption fight in Nigeria. On his part, Magu, who expressed great delight at the visit, commended Stock for finding time out of his busy schedule as the Secretary General of Interpol to visit the EFCC. Magu stressed that corruption had become an organized crime in Nigeria and it needed a concerted effort within and outside of the country to combat it. He said EFCC and Nigerians in general are delighted with the visit by the Interpol 
and that a visit gives the Commission hope in partnering with the Interpol. The anti grav Tsar gave assurances that the EFCC will remain unrelenting and resolute in its fight against corruption. We see you coming to the EFCC with uh, uh, our gladness to partner with the Interpol. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, this issue of what is in this country is going to help us our, our, our uh, uh, law enforcement agency in areas of uh, terrorist financing and money laundering and uh, how to trace um, proceeds of uh, looted fund and uh, I mean they buy houses all over the place so I was I'm particularly very happy that this has come. Magu also highlighted the importance of exchange of information, saying that it is key to winning the fight against corruption, money laundering, and terrorism financing. He also solicited the support of other countries in achieving the goal of ensuring the repatriation of funds stashed out of the country by corrupt people. Highlight of the visit was a tour of the new EFCC head office complex, Martha Eche. Reporting for the Ego. As part of efforts to further strengthen relationship between the Nigeria Defense Academy NDA and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, staff and officer cadets of the NDA paid an educational visit to the Abuja headquarters of the EFCC. The visit, which exposed the cadets to areas of expertise, was aimed at preparing them for various tasks ahead of them. Martha Eti has details of their visit. The Corps 69 officer cadets of the Department of Intelligence and Cybersecurity, NDA, came to the EFCC on an educational visit to expose themselves to areas of specialization at the Commission. Accompanied on the visit by the head, Intelligence and Cybersecurity Department of the Academy, Navy Commander Issa Rambo Saidu, the cadets visited various departments of the EFCC headquarters, thereby exposing themselves to the workings of the EFCC as it relates to reading the country of economic and financial crimes. Receiving them are the EFCC State-of-the-Art Forensics and Crime Laboratory Directorate, Gideon Gashong, who stood in for the Deputy Director, Forensics Directorate, Meimuna Betsu, briefed them on the activities of the Directorate. He conducted the officers round the Forensics Questions documents, Fingerprint Crime Scene Management, Chemistry Biology, audio, video and image analysis and digital forensic sections of the department and gave insights into the operations of the sections. He said the forensics directorate contributes immensely to the investigation of cases and ultimately in the fight against economic and financial crimes in Nigeria as most evidences tendered in court are provided through forensics. Forensic, audio, video and image analysis. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That one is the guy in charge of the this section. So basically, what we do in this lab is to analyze, just as the name, to analyze audio, video, and images. At the EFCC's operations directorate, where they were received on behalf of the acting chairman, Ibrahim Magu, the EFCC's director of operations, Umar Mohammed, gave an insight into the operations of the commission, adding that the anti-graft agency had the mandate to spearhead the anti-corruption crusade. Mohammed disclosed that the operations directorate is the live wire of the EFCC's corruption fight as it handles a number of cases which are investigated before they are taken to court for prosecution. He also stressed the importance of synergy among law enforcement agencies as one agency cannot do it alone. We have a lot of uh, understanding with government ministries and parastatals uh, which assist us in uh, carrying out our investigation or making our investigation very successful and efficient. The cadets were also taken to the Public Affairs Directorate of the EFCC, which is saddled with the preventive mandate of the fight against corruption, economic and financial crimes. Head Creative Communications Unit Hajia Aisha Lere Musa said, The mandate of the department is enshrined in Section 6 of the EFCC Establishment Act, which stipulates that the Commission should adopt measures to eradicate corruption and economic and financial crimes. 
She pointed out that based on provision of the act, the department has been able to initiate and implement a lot of public enlightenment programs aimed at fighting the menace of corruption. The department drives its mandate from the EFCC Act. If you get the EFCC Act, you just go to Section 6P of the EFCC 2004 Act, and there you will see what has empowered the department to do what it does. That section empowers the department to carry out and sustain vigorous public enlightenment campaign against economic and financial crimes both within and outside the country. Basically, that's what the department does. And it has five units. It has the media and publicity unit. It has the enlightenment and reorientation, creative and communications, public interface, and media uh, academy. Musa further used the opportunity to call on the cadets to partner with the EFCC in the fight against corruption, stressing the need for everyone to own the fight. The visiting cadets were also taken round the EFCC's Information and Communication Technology Department. Martha Eche, reporting for The Eagle. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in its efforts to curb the manners of Yahoo Yahoo, popularly known as 419, is engaging with different sectors of the society to see that this threat is eradicated or brought to its barest minimum. Worried by the rising cases of involvement of young undergraduates in financial crimes, the EFCC had written to seek partnership with the University of Ibadan in mapping out strategies to stem the trend especially in institutions of higher learning. Thelma A.K. is standing by to tell us how this engagement went. The management of the University of Ibadan, UI, or your state, has promised to partner with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in its campaign against criminal tendencies among students of tertiary institutions across Nigeria. The Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Abel Idowo Alayinka, gave the institution's commitment when the zonal head of the EFCC Ibadan office, Friday Abelo, led officers of the commission to pay him a courtesy visit. Describing the EFCC's mandate of of waging war against all forms of economic and financial crimes as a difficult national assignment. Idowu noted that the EFCC deserves the support of everyone. Speaking, the zonal head of the EFCC's Ibadan office, Friday Abello, said this visit became necessary due to recent arrests and convictions made by the commission involving youths who supposedly are the hope and the future of the nation which made it more pressing for the commission to engage with relevant authorities to stem the disturbing trend. According to Ebello, records show that most of the people perpetrating such crimes are either undergraduates or fresh graduates of higher institutions of learning, and it became imperative to start this campaign. We've since we are pretty new, and with the new trend we are seeing, uh, we're doing, uh, duty call on us to see the VC and to inform him of our new trend that we are observing. And since we have young uh, undergraduates that are, the school is chunking out to, so that um, we can foster some of the abnormalities that we're seeing in the society now correct pertaining to young graduates or undergraduates or their youth corpus in goods. He requested the university to avail the commission the avenue to meet with the students of the institution to educate them on the dire consequences of crime and criminal activities on the lives of the perpetrators and the nation as an entity. Responding to this demand, Professor Lainka pledged the readiness of the university to partner with the EFCC to secure a better future for the country. We think you are being a great international service. Think about those, uh Get better, and like I said, this is also a federal establishment, so we are partners in the uh, uh, progress. I mean, we are dealing with a very critical segment of the population, the youth. The Vice Chancellor further added that the university will give the EFCC a slot in its radio station to be used to inform the university community on its mandate and educate them on issues bordering on economic and financial crimes and the consequences. 
He also said the university will create a space for the commission in its forthcoming orientation programs for the new intakes and ensure its sustainability in the annual exercise. Thelma A.K. reporting for The Eagle. If you're just joining us, the program is still The Eagle, coming to you from the stables of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Next is a cut update. Justice Modishola Olaterugun of the Federal High Court sitting in Ikoi, Lagos, has fixed May 9, 2019 to deliver judgment in an application for final forfeiture filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, of the sums of 3 billion naira and 9.2 billion naira linked to patient Jonathan, wife of former president, good luck Jonathan. The court had on April 19, 2018, ordered an interim forfeiture of the money following an expertise application filed by the EFCC against patients and some companies. Here are the details of the court proceedings. The companies named in the suit marked FHC slash L slash CS slash 620 slash 18 are Globus Integrated Service Limited, Finchley Top Homes Limited, AMPM Global Network Limited, Pagmat Oil and Gas Limited, and Marjal Resort Limited. The money was said to be warehoused in some banks, including Sky Bank PLC, now Polaris Bank PLC, Diamond Bank PLC, now Access Bank PLC, Stambic IBTC, and First Bank PLC. At the proceedings, two prosecution witnesses, Oji Chukuma and Ogare Obole, who are investigators with the EFCC, deposed and adopted the affidavit showing cause why the money forfeited in the interim should be finally forfeited to the federal government. When asked by the prosecution counsel, Rotimi Oyedepo, to explain the details of his investigations and findings into the alleged fraud, Chukuma said the first respondent, Patience Jonathan, was a public servant with the Bielsa State Government and a permanent secretary between July 23, 2012 and October 2, 2014. The witness also informed the courts that investigations revealed that even after the first respondent, Jonathan, had retired, she was still receiving salaries up until May. May 12, 2018. Chukuma also disclosed that there are connections between Jonathan and the other respondents as the proceeds of unlawful activities were warehoused by the third to the sixth respondent, Fitchley Top Homes Limited, AMPM Global Network Limited, Pagmat Oil and Gas Limited, and Marjal Resort Limited. In a bid to conceal the funds, the seventh respondent, Esther Oba's name, would appear on several documents and the signature would be that of the first respondent. This, he said, was done to enable them to manage the proceeds of these unlawful accounts and more of other fraudulent activities. When asked to reveal his investigation into the Women for Change and Development Initiative, he told the court that it was incorporated by Dame Persians Jonathan and some trustees, including Mrs. Oyewole, Iyom Josephine and some others, but that the first respondent was the sole signatory to the account. According to him, Various sums of money were deposited by various individuals, companies and state governments, stating that a, a total sum of 1 billion 212 million naira only was paid in by one Mrs. Bola Shagaya, the sum representing part of proceeds of corrupt enrichment. He also told the courts that Mrs. Yemisi Oyewole, one of the members of the Board of Trustees, was interviewed and she told his team that the money was from things they sold in their shop. The witness, however, told the courts that investigations showed that the money in the possession of the third to six respondents' accounts did not have anything to do with the sales, adding that they did not render any services to anyone. They are proceeds of unlawful activities. He stated that some of the money was taken from Aso Villa in dollars and converted to Naira and paid into the account of one of the stewards at Aso Villa, Mr. Peter who said in his statements that he made deposits with fictitious names into this account. Chukuma also denied the claim by the seventh respondent, Oba, that the money was her salaries and Esther codes, saying he visited a plaza she owns and it is worth millions. He, under cross-examination by Ifedayo Adedikpe S.A.N., was asked if he knew that the former first lady had a pet project, Women for Change and Development Initiative, and also if he reviewed the constitution of the NGO. In his response, he told the courts that his investigations revealed Women for Change and Development Initiative as a company was used to warehouse proceeds from unlawful activities 
years while its constitution was different from what it was actually being used for. When asked if any of the people who made donations to the project did so under compulsion by the first respondent, Jonathan, Chukuma responded, among other revelations, that he did not investigate the state government that paid in money as it is a body, not a person. And his understanding of the relationship of the first respondent and Shagaya is that they are co-conspirators. Asked by counsel to the second respondent, Boyegao Yewole, SAN, about Sompre Omebe, whom he said is the promoter of the company, he said he met with Omebe's lawyer, who informed him that he incorporated the company. According to him, he is not an employee of the first to the seven respondents. During cross-examination, Ogbole said the Women for Change and Development Initiative NGO could not have written any letter against the first respondent that she had defrauded it because she is still the sole signatory of the Women for Change and Development Initiative. When asked by Mike Ozekome SAN if she ever interviewed the first respondent or Dudafa, whom he said transferred money to the third and the sixth respondents, she said she did not do so personally. Justice Mojishola Olatoregun then adjourned the case to May 9 and 13, 2019. Martha Eche, reporting for The Eagle. Money laundering is the process of concealing the origins of money obtained illegally by passing it through a complex sequence of banking transfers or commercial transactions. In this week's episode, the Eagle correspondent Ilyasa Harunabala spoke with some Nigerians on issues surrounding money laundering, what they understand by money laundering, and the way forward in fighting it. Over to you, Ilyasu. The phrase money laundering was not in the Nigerian dictionary until in the 1980s which was when it was recognized and efforts were made to deal with the problem by the government. Therefore, there were decrees said by the government of General Muhammad Buhari, Ibrahim Badamasu Babangida and Sana Abacha as head of state and military president respectively, prohibiting activities related to money laundering. What then is money laundering? It is a financial activity, investment, or anything involving concealment of stolen fund, either public or private funds, stolen, illicit acquisition of money. Money laundering is um, an illegal process of evacuating money out of the country to another country, to offshore countries. Money basically gotten from crime and criminal activities. Money laundering is a process employed by dubious elements in the committee of the just society, whereby they take money from our economy and smuggle it overseas. Probably after converting it to hard currency, they smuggle this money away. Money laundering is a process where ill-gotten wealth is transformed so that it appears legitimate. The effect of such laundered fund is that it's commonly used to commit crimes such as terrorism financing, both by during elections, and other criminal activities bedeviling Nigeria. The sanction includes a term of imprisonment of not less than seven years without option of a fine, a financial institution to a fine of not less than 25 million naira, a designated non-financial business and profession to a fine of not less than 10 million naira among others. Speaking with a cross-section of Nigerians on what should be done to curtail the activities, here is their submission. Government is trying, really. But if you look at the, um, the whistleblowing mechanism, of which he actually help, is helping, is helping. And uh, I think they should do more, especially with respect to banks, because I think the bank has more um, role to play in this thing. And I think most of these bank managers and top um, owners of this bank, they have been compromised. You understand? So without them consenting to this uh, uh, act, I don't think it's really going to be easy to, uh, um, to loot money. So. We need to talk to ourselves first. We are trying to fight corruption, but we need to fight ourselves because the corruption starts from us. Respondents also advised Bureau the change operators 
banks, non-financial institutions not to engage in money laundering as it not only affects the economy negatively, but is a grave economic crime. Money laundering might be beneficial in the short run, but in the long run it will hurt the economy, it will hurt the individual and it will hurt the banking institutions. And everybody else that depends on commercial banks. The economy is greatly dependent on commercial banks. Small businesses are dependent on commercial banks, loans, salary advances, things like that. And if the banks are hurting themselves, they're hurting the individuals and the people that. My message is that banks should step up their games. If you look closely, for you to say banks are conniving with some things, they will not like to lose customers, most especially the blue change operators. Now it is that we have EFCC, we have ICPC. I think that they should have an ego eye. They should have an insider that give them what is happening outside. Now that you know what money laundering is, its legal principles, why won't you join the act and join hands with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to make Nigeria great? I am Ilyasu Haruna Bala, reporting for The Ego. And that's all we can take on today's episode of The Eagle. To be part of the program, send your inquiries and suggestions to The Eagle at EFCCNigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at Official EFCC or Official EFCC at gmail.com. You can like our page on Facebook.com for slash Official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at Official EFCC. And of course, and as usual, you can visit our Instagram page at Official EFCC. To watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. I leave you with this parting words from Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. And she says, no one can fight corruption for Nigerians except Nigerians. Everyone has to be committed from the top to the bottom to fight it. So let's all make personal effort to see that corruption is eradicated in Nigeria. Goodbye and God bless Nigeria.